And there was a long pause, and then he said to me, you know, my editors here at USA Today keep telling me I need to be writing more upbeat news, and I don't think this qualifies. And it, it never hit home to me, um, I guess in a personal way. This, the, here it was the year 2003, I believe, at that point. And an erasure of a presidential phone call from 1963 discussing a matter that was then 40 years old was apparently too sensitive for the national media. Yep. Lone nut. Red killer. Government agent. Patsy. Blank slate. Among the many unanswered questions, or questionable answers, surrounding Lee Harvey Oswald, the one-time U.S. Marine and defector to the Soviet Union, none remain as controversial or compelling as his alleged trip to Mexico City in the fall of 1963, seven weeks prior to the assassination. According to the Warren Commission, he went there in the hopes of obtaining a visa to travel through Cuba to the Soviet Union. According to others, it's not quite as cut and dry. In 1999, I saw a presentation about the so-called Mexico City tapes, and it included in it a transcript of a Lyndon Johnson, uh, J. Edgar Hoover phone call on uh, the morning after the Kennedy assassination. And I had listened to some of the Johnson tapes, and, but I didn't have this one, and I decided I'd like to hear it for myself. So um, a couple months later, I contacted the LBJ library in Austin, uh, where the tapes are located, and spoke to a staffer there and said, look, I'm interested in getting a particular tape. Um, could you send it to me? And she said, oh, which tape is that? And I explained it's the one between Hoover and Johnson the morning after the assassination. And then uh, something very funny happened. She said, well, you know, that tape is very poor quality, hard to listen to. You see, he was using his vice presidential taping equipment. You don't really want that tape. And I said, well, you know, I have audio engineering friends. Uh, we can probably do something. Could you please send it to me? And after a little bit of protest, she finally sent me the tape. And what this is is a cassette tape with a compilation of calls on it. And when I played that, I was amazed to find that instead of a Hoover Johnson phone call, there was 14 minutes of pure hiss. And yet the other calls around that were fine. Uh, so I called uh, this woman back at the LBJ library and I said, you know, this tape looks like it's been erased or something. And she repeated to me the same story she'd given before, vice presidential taping equipment, poor quality, and so on and so forth. And uh, this hardly seemed like it could be true, given that the other phone calls uh, with the same equipment, both before and after, were just fine. Um, so uh, I didn't get much uh, information out of her other than that. Uh, I did a little more research about the whole matter and then ended up writing an essay uh, on the History Matters website about what I called the 14-minute gap. Uh, Dick has already Dick has already been announced, and you can serve with anybody for the good of America. And uh, uh, this is a, this is a question that has a good many more ramifications than on the surface. And uh, uh, there we got to take this out of the arena where they're testifying that Khrushchev and Castro did this and did that, and uh, kicking us into a war that can kill 40 million, million Americans in an hour. And uh, uh, you'd put on your uniform in a minute. Now, the reason I ask Warren is because he's the Not chief. Not only that, I, I just, uh, I don't think the chief, the chief Justice should have said it, don't you? Well, you want me to tell you the truth? I ain't. You know what happened? <laughs> you know what happened? Bobby and him went up to see him today, and he turned him down cold and said no. Yeah. Two hours later, I called him and ordered him down here, and he didn't want to come. I insisted he come. He came down here, and he told me no twice. And I just pulled out what Hoover told me about the little incident in Mexico City, and I said, now. It was probably the next year, I think, when I visited the LBJ Library again in person to see if I could learn more about this. 
and I went to the research desk, asked for the original staffer by name, and was told she was at lunch, and the person said, well, can I help you? And I said, sure, I'm interested in one of these Johnson phone calls. And he said, okay, which one? And I said, well, it's the Hoover Johnson call of the morning of the 23rd. And he noticeably stiffened and stammered and said, sir, I'll, I'll get someone who can help you. <laughs> and so sure enough, a couple minutes later, um, a senior uh, archivist named Claudia Anderson comes sweeping down the stairs and says, Mr. Bradford, uh, let's go off to a private room. And we went off and had a little conversation. She said, Mr. Bradford, uh, what would you like to know? And I said, well, I'm just trying to find out more about this tape that appears to have been erased. And from 18 inches away, she gave me the same story, almost in the same language that I got before. And I clearly got the impression that this was a story now about the tape, that this was the company line at the LBJ Library about this tape. And she was very nice. Uh, she showed me around the place. I got to see the original magnetic belts on which the conversations were recorded. Um, but they weren't budging from their story. 